Hi everyone, so today I welcome Sonia Solikari, who is the director of the Museum of the Home here in London. So today we're going to be speaking about sleep, which is something that's so important to midlife women. In fact, people all over the world, we all need to get enough sleep, but it can be more difficult at midlife and beyond. And we're going to be talking about homeware and how your style can be reflected in the home. I'm Alexandra Alenska, and I've worked as a creative director and stylist for luxury brands, including Chanel Celine and Vanessa Bruno as well as magazines including Vogue and Harper's Bazaar. And I've been featured in international press, including Forbes, Elle, The Sunday Times and The Independent. I now help directors and leaders in midlife and beyond to rebalance that work, 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 busy, busy, busy lifestyle you've become accustomed to because you know life's too short to stay in that career-driven comfort zone. I help you to redesign and restyle your life, especially at midlife with life-changing transitions, such as the breakup of relationship, divorce, menopause, or turning 40 and beyond. From your home and your wardrobe to your mind and social life, I help you with your stylish next chapter to step into your best life because I know you're ready to rock life again. Welcome, Sonia. Thank you very much. So Sonia, tell me about the Festival of Sleep that you've got going at the Museum of the Home at the moment. Yeah, so we're exploring sleep over 400 years. Um, so we're taking it right back. We've dressed all our famous rooms through time. So you can see little sleep stories in each room. And we're really looking at um, the different ways that people have explored um, sleep over time. So um, that's everything from, um, you know, people who are sort of suffering disability or illness, or we're looking also about magic and potions and the smells that are encouraging people to get a good night's sleep. And we're taking it right through to the present day. So some of those things um, are still very popular today. So I think, you know, something like scents and, you know, using lavender or chamomile to really calm yourself down before bed is something which I think a lot of people can relate to. We've had a number of sleep experts in, so oh. I've got some actual tips. Um, the most distressing one is no <laughs> lions. No lions? No, no. If you lie in, it ruins your whole sleep pattern. Um, and I think people in the past knew this. There was much more sort of like regimented sleep patterns. Mm. Um, you know, there's also, uh, if you look back in time, people often practiced interrupted sleep. So they were comfortable about getting up in the middle of the night and doing something and then going back to bed. And I think that this is something, something which causes people quite a lot of anxiety now like if you wake yeah. up in the middle of the night it's like oh my goodness i'm not sleeping i'm mm. not sleeping um but actually it's fine and, you know if you're waking up in the middle of the night and you can't get back to sleep the best thing you can do is just relax about it and you know pick up and pick up a magazine or you know have a cup of tea or whatever helps calm you down but just don't sit very angst you know angsty about not oh, sleeping oh i think we've all been there yeah. mm, and i love your outfit today sonia Thank very, you. sonia is always incredibly well dressed i don't know if you've seen her feature on stylewhisper.com you can have a look at sonia's personal style story um, i'm loving your colors today what, which era is this from so um i think this is there's seventies going into early eighties with the night dress. So it's all it's all vintage, um, all purchased either at vintage um, sellers or online. eBay always is a good source. Do you have any tips for stylish loungewear or, or stylish lounging, uh, perhaps? Well, I I think I think the question of what we wear indoors is a big, you know, and it's something that we ask at the museum. It's it's kind of how do you relax at home? So what do you do the minute you get back home? You know. It, Almost certainly people take off their shoes, but probably, as Jean Harlow said, you slip into something more comfortable. And so what is that? Mm. Um, so obviously the tip is obviously whatever makes you feel most comfortable at home, ultimately. Um, but in terms of style, I think, well, because we've got a cost of living crisis, fuel prices are going up. I'd say people are needing to look at something cosy this um, <laughs> winter. Um, <laughs> I, I, you know, this is where Sonia and I differ yeah. because Sonia's approach has always very much been, you know, put another jumper on. Whereas mine was like, crank the central heating up. <laughs> what are you, you going to do this year? What are you going to do this year? You Go to the be... tropics, I think. <laughs> You'll be getting out your cashmere. I will, I will be uh, swaddling myself in yeah, cashmere. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But I think we don't need to sacrifice, you know, you've got this idea of being comfortable, but I don't mm. think that this has to be a polar opposite of being stylish, you know? No. Uh, and you, so I, I think I think sometimes we talk about putting comfort first and obviously as mm. midlife women, you know, comfort is super important to us. There's all sorts of things going on. We're all very busy. Yeah. So how do you how do you stay? Because you're always impeccably dressed. How do you stay, stay stylish and comfortable? 
um, well, something like this. So I'm a big fan of a house coat. So ah. um, that, and it covers a sort of a multitude of sins. So you could be in your pajamas underneath, put something on that isn't quite, you know, it's a step up from a dressing gown. And then you feel more comfortable opening the front door. I think yeah, that's, that's, that's the key about what you wear indoors because it's not necessarily as private as you think. <laughs> And like, there's that wonderful example. I, I always go, there's like, you might, you, you may remember yourself back in 1997 when um, the Labour government got in and the morning after, um, Sherry oh, yes, Blair, Sherry right. Blair opened her door to the world's press and she was in her nighty. Um, and so it was that moment, like, what, what do we wear indoors? Could, you know, be seen by a number of people who you might not expect it to be seen by. So I think, Indeed. you know, there, there is there is always that element. Think think about think about the postman. <laughs> think like, about the postman. I love yeah, that tip. Yeah. Although it's very true, especially today in such a social media dominant landscape where there's pictures just being taken everywhere all the time. Yes. Um, that's not to say we have to dress for the camera constantly, but we can certainly dress for ourselves and elevate our style for the postman. <laughs> I mean, if, if, in, if in doubt, a bit of red lipstick, I'd say. And then you could be wearing what you like, I think. And then yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> it always lifts it. So, um, yeah, yeah. It's true. There's nothing like a bit of red lipstick to, to lift one's spirits, I think. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, yeah, so, don't, so Sonia's tip is don't hesitate to wear, you know, your cashmere joggers, your whatever it is you've got under there and just pop on a beautiful dressing gown. Or, um, or a house coat, as Sonia says. <laughs> uh, we'll put some examples in stylewhisper.com and on Instagram if you want to have a look. Mm -hmm. So obviously, Sonia, at the Museum of the Home, you've got some yeah. beautiful rooms and you've mm. got changing exhibitions as well as loads of live events and talks and experiences. So yes, it's quite a dynamic. Absolutely. I love what you've, you've done to the place. Thank you. So one of the things I know that you, you deal with is the, the rooms from the different eras. Yeah the decades represented and sometimes we see quite a strong sense of style in those rooms you know it mm. might not always be to my taste personally yes. you know rooms from the 1970s or 60s sometimes can be a little gaudy for my taste for instance uh -huh. um, but I'm fascinated by the by the way in which you know home trends just like fashion trends are mm. you know fashion is a cultural reflection a societal reflection and that echo, that's also echoed in the home yeah and um and so I'm intrigued to to sort of ask you two questions one is how do you think our modern era is you know defined stylistically in the home and also what about yeah. your personal style in your home yes well i think i think in terms of in terms of model, modern style in the home i mean i mean there's a number of trends mm. going on you know simultaneously at the mm. moment and, that, and that's and that's something that, which didn't really happen so much in the past there weren't mm. there weren't so many choices yes it's the same in fashion trends in um, fact yeah they never really go away now do they everything is just there all at once no so i couldn't categorically say mm. oh well it's definitely neutrals mm. um you know because of course at the same time you've got people you know just down the road house house, house of hackney still, still doing the like the velvets and the really yeah. sort of bold prints um but I think inevitably there's always a there, there, there's always um, you know fashion as in clothing um, will reflect that as well. Mm. So some of, some of the some makers now um, are designing both homewares um, and personal wares, and so yes. you can sort of continue that look across. I mean, you know, someone who's been doing it for years, for example, is Missoni. You know, mm. you could, you oh, could I have just... those. I love their towels. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And then great indoor wear, actually, isn't it? Very yeah. comfortable. But. You know, that's an example how you can bring that their, their very kind of distinctive zigzag stripy pattern. You can mm. both wear it and, you know, kind of have it on your sofa. Mm. So it, you can sort of be in a, a, a cocoon of pattern. I'm a maximalist, like unapologetic. <laughs> um, <laughs> so my my home is quite cluttered in a curated way. Um, but I've got lots of um, prints and very rich fabrics so I'm a huge fan of velvet you know I think velvet is one of the most glamorous luxurious fabrics so I, I got that on my sofa but I've absolutely got a lot of velvet in my wardrobe and I just think a little velvet jacket can yeah again it can make it can make any outfit yeah absolutely yeah. there's there's nothing there's nothing like like velvet and, and like stroking velvet it's a bit like stroking a cat isn't it it's sort of yeah. quite soothing and it makes you feel quite cozy and comfortable be that whether it's on your body or, or in your home i mean i love it but it's interesting about velvet because some people report that it sort of puts their teeth on end a little bit i think uh, when something you stroke about it the wrong way yeah a bit like a cat you don't want to stroke a cat the wrong way i don't want to do. stroke <laughs> anyone the wrong way i think <laughs> good tip yeah <laughs> I think it's interesting today because I think once you've defined your personal style or perhaps evolved your personal style as you know as we get older mm. and we've, we've edited some of our childish fantasies out and maybe taken some of them into the future um, 
that it's become easier than ever before in a way to be able to express our style through our wardrobes and also through our home decisions. I believe yeah. that you know style supports us so that our if you so that if your home and your wardrobe represent you know your inner self that sounds totally cheesy but you know mm. really represents your soul then you're going to feel more comfortable more relaxed more energized whatever it is that you want yeah. to feel in your clothes and in your home and I think you're a really good example of that. Oh well thank you but I, you know I think um, yeah you've hit the nail on the head there with the your, your sort of inner soul because actually that's something which you know if I may go back in time you know has been has been a really strong thread um, in, in in home style and personal style. So if we go back to the 18th century, for example, there was this concept called politeness, which isn't quite the same use of the word today, but what it meant was that people were kind of restrained in oh. both their dress and, and, and their interior decoration. And right. that was deemed to be akin to their ethics and moral standards. Oh, fascinating. So the more opulent your home was, the more decadent um, you were deemed to be. And, um, <laughs> you know in in your lifestyle and it was it was sort of yeah um thought of as more immoral to have like more velvets etc in your in your home and so it's absolutely i mean you know times have changed but absolutely how you dress and how you decorate your home can be a spiritual thing mm. um and it can very much express how you feel about the world um mm. as well as how you feel about yourself I mean, Sonia, that would yeah. positively make you marry Antoinette then by uh, by politeness standards of the 1800s. Oh, yeah. No, I think I think I would be have been considered very roguish um, <laughs> in, <laughs> and I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> so, Sonia, going back to this idea mm. about, you know, you mentioned that the home isn't always as, as private a sphere, perhaps, as we sometimes think it is. Um, yeah. And postman jokes aside, in terms of the way that our style expresses ourselves through our home and wardrobe mm. decisions. It's not always just for ourselves though, is it? You know, okay. fashion is very much in style, is very much an expression of our soul and how we want to be seen in the world. But I yeah. think there's also an element, especially in the home, mm. to which um, there's an element of status, you know, linking yeah. back to perhaps <laughs> you being Marie Antoinette, you know. <laughs> um, and the things that we have around our home. I'm thinking about years gone by when people would have like carriage clocks on their mantelpieces yeah. yeah. and and so forth. It's also a symbol of, you know, some kind of wealth or status, I think. Yeah. Um, and there's, there's this idea of keeping up with the Joneses, which maybe, yeah. you know, we don't have quite in the same way anymore. But I wondered what you thought about this. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad you mentioned the mantelpiece because that is the prime example because mantelpieces or sometimes a focal shelf if, if, if you don't have a fireplace um, have absolutely, they're, they're kind of our personal altars. You know, so people, love that. yeah, because people mm. very carefully arrange objects on their mantelpiece. Mm. And um, the the big question, and I ask this to a lot of our visitors at the museum, you know, when, when, we're, when, we're, when we're exploring like personal choices and expression of, of self, is are you doing it for you or are mm. you doing it for others? And mm. sometimes people don't, don't really know. There's an idea yeah. of an imaginary person almost who may come in and see these things and appreciate these things. But they're often um, like you can you can sort of read in microcosm somebody's life story that's, sometimes. That's so true. I I, I call um, it people style story, and it's it's what I help my clients with and brands. You know, yeah. it's it's that's so so important. Yeah, I mean it can go right back to their childhood. So you know, you mentioned something like a clock. Well, that clock could have been something that was given to them by their grandmother. So mm. you've got that family link, and mm. there could be photos. Some people, you know, if you're talking about status, some people put their um, invitations. You know, mm. that's a prime thing, isn't it, to put on your mantelpiece. Yeah. Um, you know, it could it could be um, you know all kinds of things, but it could it could go back decades and, mm. and you know and, and yeah and tell that real story of you. But it's it's where people most people often don't think of themselves as curating their home, but actually when you look mm. at, at those horizontal display spaces, you can often see curation right there. And people have really thought about what goes next to what. I love that people yeah. unintentionally styling. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's so. That's so. That's so true. Actually, it's interesting you say this. You know, for me, I have a whole a whole system uh, when I work with 
clients, which is very much about memory. Mm. And one of the first things that I do, whether whether I'm working with private clients or brands, is I ask people to bring something in that's significant to them. You know, that yeah. could be a, um, a piece of clothing, it could be something from the home. Mm. And as you say, what they choose says so much about them beyond, yeah. you know, oh, you know, this is, oh, I just, I just had this. No, it's like they've chosen this, you know? Yeah. Because even if somebody brings in a pair of joggy bottoms, you know, it's like, okay, that says a lot about their lifestyle, the way they see themselves, you know, yeah. the way that they want to feel. Um, yeah. So, so I love that you've you've brought up that subject. Yeah. No, that's a really great approach. I mean, you know, obviously, I, I run a museum, so I think objects tell stories. Mm. Um, but but they they really do. We you know, objects can't live without the things that we invest in them. Mm. If you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then then they become something outside of themselves. So. Yeah, absolutely. Choose, choosing something that that means something to you is a great starting point for personal style. Yeah, and like yeah. It, see, and then then it's easier to evolve that style um, once we've got a, a good starting point of the essence of somebody. I think, yeah. and you know what they believe in, and as you say, you know, some people are myself included, terrifically nostalgic and sentimental, and. You know, I love the idea that we can choose what we have around us very carefully, that we're not just buying loads of stuff and, you know, cramming it into our homes or our wardrobes, yeah. but that if we choose considerately, then we can also infuse modern possessions with new meanings. Yes. I like to um, I like to give mantras to mm. new possessions because I think, you know, energetically speaking, when we bring something into our home, it should also have a good energy to it, you know? So I'm often saying this to clients, especially if they've been through divorce or something, you know, difficult mm. times, because mm. obviously a lot of my clients are in midlife and we've got loads of transitions during this time. So yeah. I always think it's a nice idea to to put an intention into an object mm. when we bring it into our home. It could be something as simple as, you know, I've got this, you know, or just a little message um, whenever we buy something new and put it into the homes so that then yeah. that energy is kind of infused into it. And when we see that object, whatever it might be, a, a piece of jewelry, a vase, anything like that, whenever we go to use it, yeah. um, it has that message. Just like you said, that when you've got a clock on your mantelpiece that perhaps belonged to your grandmother, you know, you're mm. reminded of your grandmother. It's that same kind of um, association. The object becomes a physical manifestation um, of how you want to feel. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, our homes and the objects that we feel them in, I mean, it's just all like a sort of living, breathing mm. organism. And they're so all true. talking to each other. And it's interesting what you say about sort of pain and trauma and whether we keep those objects with, with mm. us or whether we... Um, you know, get rid of get rid of them and get mm. rid and you know, sort of, and whether that is sort of shedding ourselves of some of that, like, you know, residual hurt, mm. um, etc. It's a really good question. I mean, a lot of people kind of keep things in boxes as well. You know, yeah. so our, our our homes will be you know filled with things that we're not ready to look at yet, or things. Yeah. And, and it doesn't need to be a negative thing. Sometimes we put things away and they come back on the cycle of of love, don't yeah. they? As well. Um, which is why I've got sort of some 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 issues with sort of Marie Kondo throwing everything out because oh, me too. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, I feel that 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 sometimes we're we're quite cyclical in our emotions as human beings, mm. and you know, something which may be abhorrent to you one day, you may be ready to sort of revisit another day. You know, maybe there's a favourite jacket that you wore, you know, in a, on a time when you remember, but you know, it might mean something else in sort of three three years time, or yeah, you know, I mean. It, it's a fashion thing as well you know often mm. when, often when things are just going out of fashion we're like oh i don't ever see that again and yeah then, but i think if it's something that fits great and makes you look fantastic you mm. know, do put it in a box and like absolutely <laughs> yeah i completely agree and yeah. it's also interesting to consider that with you know trends in the home yeah because you know we've talked about the fact that we've got everything available today that the perhaps perhaps the dominant trend both in home and fashion today is eclecticism you know yeah. yes we have these white boxes that you know people live in mm. uh, all over the world and linking to the the way of exhibiting in ex in um, in galleries too which mm. actually thank god the museum of the home goes against yay yeah. <laughs> yeah. but you know we've got this idea that you, you can have quite a neutral space as you mentioned which can be quite fashionable now mm. but then we we can fill it up with old and new and everything sort of mixed together so therefore that can also help us to tell our style story the fact that we can sort of curate and recurate you know yeah. i've got a cupboard where i've got just i mean you can imagine i've just got loads <laughs> of vases and all sorts of you know bits and pieces and i love to just as the seasons change, take the opportunity to sort of recurate my, as you yes. say, horizontal spaces, my shelves, yep. you know, my mantelpiece, my coffee table. And it just, 
using the existing things that I've got, using books, using jewelry, using things that, you know, from my special cupboard and, and getting yeah. things out, like you say, that you've, you've maybe had in that cupboard for a while and just reconsidering them. And, you know, sometimes taking an old vase that you maybe thought was quite, was quite ugly at one point, but suddenly it just feels right. And then, you know, yeah. you put some alternative flowers inside it and it just feels yeah. fresh again. You know, like for a long time, I didn't like, hydrangeas I thought they were just way too cottagey and you know blossomy and rustic and blousy. you know blousy, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you know and my mum has you know heaps of them in her garden it's quite wonderful yeah. but you know suddenly when you mix them with something like this I don't know what this is this weird tropical ugly flower yeah. but you know it just it just takes them away you know, yeah, part of my methodology going there. exactly yeah. Part of my methodology is very much about you know add that touch of spice something a bit ugly to, yeah. to break you know too much prettiness and you know suddenly I, I'm looking at these and I'm like wow and of course orange and blue is such a great combo and so yeah. I think sometimes it is about recurating and restyling things that we already have and be yeah. that wardrobe or be that home object we don't need to always be you know buying heaps of new things no and actually that that seasonal thing is very interesting when you say like maybe you know mm. autumn's coming etc you may want to have a rethink of the shelf and what's on it um, this is this is something that the Victorians love to do. You know, ah. there, there were sort of summer summer curtains, which you can imagine were more light and breezy, and then there were your heavy sort of winter drapes. Mm. And you know, those things would be sort of kept and put back out. You know, obviously, if you had the money, you may buy new every year. But obviously, like you said, you know, if you're thinking sustainably, you know, you could have these things which sort of just ro rotate in your home. So your home is constantly evolving with the seasons. Mm. And you might just want to re re replace a light fitting, you know, something more kind of, you know, orangey and warm in the winter months mm. and sort of zing it up in the summer months or whatever, whatever suits you. But, um, you know, we do we do it comfortably with our wardrobes, don't mm. we? You know, yeah. we change our wardrobe seasonally. And so mm. why, why not our homes? Yeah. And, you know, things like cushions as well, cushion covers are super easy ways of doing it. And, and like you said, you know, flowers and plants. Mm. In, you know in, in another way but well i look forward to seeing your autumnally created home sonia and uh, <laughs> you're welcome anytime and to uh, and to visiting the museum which yeah. has got its beautiful gardens as well it has yes so yes. thank you so much for coming if any of you are in london do go and visit the museum of the home um mm -hmm. you might bump into the lovely sonia salikari <laughs> thank you so much it's been a pleasure having you on the bed with us today it's been a pleasure being in bed with you <laughs> always sonia <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed this first episode of In Bed With and uh, if you have then please do subscribe to my channel and thank you so much for watching. Merci, au revoir, à la prochaine!